God, we love you and we thank you so much for your goodness in our life. And uh, we thank you for this day that is a gift. And we ask, Lord, that uh, you help each one of us to steward this gift well. Uh, not only this day, Father, but these last few days of this semester. Lord, let them be the best days of this semester. Lord, let us not just buy our time until noon on Friday, but Lord, let us give everything and let these be the best days of this semester. Uh, we do pray for our preschoolers. We ask you, Lord, to just uh, let your hand of healing rest upon those that are sick. Those who are not sick, oh Father, would you just protect them and keep them from any illness uh, and protect our teachers that they don't get sick before uh, Christmas holiday. We love you and we thank you for this and we ask you to speak to our lives as we close out this series in your name. Amen. All right, we are very, very pressed on time today, so we do need to get right into it. We're finishing up on Elijah, um, and we're actually going to go back uh, to the, the pinnacle of, of Elijah's story, and that is the, Mount, uh, the, the victory on Mount Carmel. So let's, let's, uh, let's look at 1 Kings 18. When Ahab saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's commands and followed after the Baals, which are the idols that had been set up. So not that you guys need this, this lesson, um, but... Uh, Israel was moving into a place of, of that they knew they had followed the one true God, and yet uh, under Ahab's rule, these these bells were being set up, and they were becoming polytheistic in their in their um, in their worship. So monotheism, we know, is is the worship of one uh, of one God, or the belief that there is one God. Polytheism, the the belief that there are multiple that there are multiple gods. Now, this is, this is what I want us to know as we set up this, uh, this devotional today. Uh, false gods uh, promise what only the true God can provide. False gods promise what only the true God can provide. Now, this, this seems odd to get this kind of lesson in this kind of setting, right? Because uh, we would all say... <laughs> We've already bought into that. We don't need a lesson on what um, uh, monotheism and polytheism is. We, we get that. We're giving our life uh, to the cause of the one true God. But I, I have found that one of the easiest places, um, one of the easiest places to, to fall into the trap of, of sort of serving another God actually is in these kind of ministry type settings. And that, that, might seem, that might seem odd, and, and I wouldn't want to say that any of us would do it in the form of idolatry, but, but I think it becomes easy when you are doing a good work to fall in love with the work rather than the one that we are doing the work for. And, and, and you, you think, well, that's crazy. That's not really, uh, that would never happen to us. But, but think about the Pharisees for a moment. All right, the Pharisees were the, the most religious people or looked at as the most religious people of their day, right? And, 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 and they, they really did, uh, they, they really were uh, pious in, in, their, in their walk with God in a lot of ways, right? And, and they had this love for something that was very good, something that was given by God called the law. God had given the law to Moses that, that his people could use the law as a way to connect more fully and more intimately with him. But the Pharisees fell more in love with the, the law of God and keeping the law of God rather than they did the God of the law. Right. And, and, and so now when we look back at the Pharisees, it's very easy to sort of see their hypocrisy. But I think it's also important that we see the trap that they fell into because it's a very easy trap for us to fall into. We fall more in love with what we're doing than who we're doing it for. And when we do that, that sort of becomes a God, right? It sort of becomes an idol it, and, and it becomes our, our pursuit. And so uh, I would just say to you, it is possible 
for us to fall into this place where we unintentionally and even with, with, with righteous pursuit um, can, can sort of put things above God that, that shouldn't be. Uh, we see this with all kinds of things, whether it is, whether it is religion, uh, whether it is, it is the pursuit of money, uh, the pursuit of just our, our own uh, entertainment or fleshly gratification, it is very easy for us uh, in this day to fall into this trap, even if we don't have idols of worship that we're physically bowing down to. Here was Elijah's prophetic message for, for the people of this time. Uh, and and I'll, I'll go ahead and, and give you the, the point here. It's time to quit wavering. Like, it, it's, it's time to, to, to stop saying we love God and yet bowing down to these idols of Baal. And, and, and listen to this verse. Now, summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on the Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Elijah, Elijah put the gauntlet down. He put the line in the sand and he said, Hey guys, it's time to put an end to this. You either go this way and serve the gods of Baal, or you step over the line and you forsake those idols and you pursue the one true God, who, by the way, is the one who brought our people out of bondage. He is the one who has kept us every step of the way as a nation. He is the one that has established us. He is the one that has got us to the place we are today. And, and we either forsake him or we go all in in our service to him. But it is time to stop wavering between the two. It's time, in other words, it's time to, to stop having one foot in with the world and one foot in with God. We're either going to go one way or the other, but we can't do both anymore. Now, I love the, the next lines of, of this passage, beginning verse 24. Then Elijah said, here's what we're going to do. You call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God who answers by fire. He is the God, or he is God. Then all the people said, what you said is good. At that time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, O Lord. Answer me so these people will, then, will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. I love, I love what Elijah said. He said, the one true God, it's either our God or the gods of Baal. He's going to answer by fire today. Now, I've always thought this part of the story is so cool, right? And maybe it's because when I was growing up, I, I sort of loved to play with fire, even though my parents always told me, don't play with matches, don't play with fire. It's like, I, maybe it was because they told me don't do that that I gravitated to wanting to do that, right? And so uh, we just found creative ways to play with fire. Back in, in that day, um, aerosol cans were still a big thing, right? And so uh, we had like aerosol, Lysol. We had aeros my, my sister, was it like Aquanet or the hairspray? Because their hair literally put them a foot taller. I mean, it was amazing what ladies did with their hair back then. Uh, crazy. But it took a lot of hairspray. But, but what was really cool for me is, is those aerosol cans, like they made incredible blow torches. Yeah, so there were, yeah, there were many a nights, there were many a nights when the house was nearly burnt down uh, at, the, at the hands of this pyromaniac, right? So I, I just love chasing people through the house with the blowtorch. You don't want me to tell this story in, in elementary chapel? Is that what you're saying, Ms. Ribbons? All right, so, uh, yeah. And then I remember another time, like, there was this, uh, there was this mouthwash, actually, 
called Dr. Tissinger's Mouthwash. Has anyone ever, yeah, some places in the South, they call it rock gut liquor, right? I mean, this stuff, this stuff is, is got serious, it is, there's alcohol in this stuff, but it's just this real potent mouthwash. And me and my friend, uh, he was actually the brother of a friend, and my, my friend liked to go to bed early, uh, so me and his brother Brent uh, McGee uh, stayed up really late, and we were trying to find out what is actually flammable in the medicine cabinet. <laughs> we found out Dr. Tissinger's is very flammable, right? And, and so we had seen these things on TV where there's like fire-breathing people, and you could, you know, they would hold the lighter out, and then they would spit, and, and the fire would blow. Dr. Tissinger's works that way, right? Um, and and so, so me and Brent, we, we open up the, the shower curtain and we think, you know, against that wall is a good place to do it. And so we hold the light and we're, and man, it's like fire breathing. It is amazing. It is so cool. And, and, and um, until we nearly burn Brent's house down and his father comes down in his skivvies and that's not a sight you will ever want to see in your life. And he gives us the chewing out of our life, right? And, and, and we have to clean all this black stuff off the walls and off the ceiling. It is the worst mess ever. Um, and, but I, anyway, I'll never forget it. All right. So, so I have sort of this infatuation with fire, I guess. And so I, I think, man, this is a pretty cool story. You think God is sending this fire down from heaven to show who is the one true God. Well, I think to myself, think of what, think of what God did for us. I, 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 I'm like, God, if you could do that today, like think of all the people that would come to you, like if you would send fire down from heaven, how amazing would that be? Like in my mind, I'm thinking, I want that kind of miracle, right? I want to see you do that. And, and as I'm reading this, I'm just reminded of how much more than God, how much more God did than that when He sent Jesus down. Like, can we celebrate that at Christmas, right? But but when we see Jesus coming to this earth, when we see Jesus dying on that cross, it is more miraculous, it is more explosive than any fire that could be sent down from heaven. God sent His Son. And so we see that God has shown himself today, like in a more miraculous way than he did with fire on Carmel that day. God has shown himself through Jesus. He has shown himself through Jesus. And, and because of that, guys, because of that, the only way that we will be able to not waver in our faith, the only way that we will be able to make sure that we never pursue anything else above God, that we never put what we do for God, uh, above who we are before God. Uh, the only way we can do that is to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and remember that, the prom his, that, that He is better than the promise of any other God or any other thing or any idol. Like He's better. And, and, and I want to show you this. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood and the stones, the soil, and licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, the Lord, He is God, the Lord, He is God. That is how miraculous that fire was that day on Carmel. That is what God did as a result of that. But listen to this. When we come to Hebrews, we see what God did as a result of sending Jesus down. In, in Hebrews 11, uh, all these examples are given of ways that God has revealed himself just like he did for Elijah. Just like he did with the sending down of fire. Like all these miraculous things are talked about in Hebrews 11. All these ways that God has shown himself. But look what he says as he comes to the end of chapter 11 and the beginning of verse 12 in Hebrews. These were all commanded or commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what they had been promised. Since God had planned something better. Say better. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Then we go to Hebrews 12. Therefore, because God has given us something better, 
We are surrounded by these great cloud of witnesses, the Elijahs, the Moseses that have gone before us, that saw the fire fall, that saw these miracles. Um, we can throw off every weight that hinders us and so easily entangle us. Let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out before us. And here it is. Focus in. Fix your eyes on Jesus the author and the perfecter of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and set down at the right hand of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you, here it is, so that you will not grow weary and that you will not lose heart. We go back to the statement from the, from the, very, from the very beginning. False gods promise what only the true God provides. Our God has provided us in Jesus something that is better. Something that is better. And if we'll keep our eyes on Him, if we'll make sure that our eyes are on Him, not what we're doing for Him, like not, not the religious ceremonies that we put on for Him. All that's, all that's important. But as we're doing that, let's keep our eyes on Him because He's something better. And if we'll do that, we'll never have to worry about losing heart or growing weary in this life. Let me pray for you. God, we love you and we thank you so much for who you are. God, would you help us, especially in this season that is so busy, uh, as we finish out the semester, would you help us, Lord, to stay focused on you? Uh, and Lord, knowing that it's only in you and it's only in our focus that is on you that we won't grow weary, Lord, help us. Help us to stay focused. And God, help us as we do this work here at Bice not to waver in our opinions, to never become focused more on what we're doing than who we're doing it for. God, let us keep our focus on you. We love you and thank you for all that you have done for us through Jesus. Let that remain our focus in your name. Amen. Bless you guys.